There are so many depth estimation models, but which one should you use? Let's compare some of the most common ones in terms of their specialty, speed, training availability, and license. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. So first, I'd like to define what depth estimation means. So it's a process of taking a RGB image, feeding it inside your model, and getting an output of your disparity map, or sometimes your depth map. So what's the difference between disparity and depth? So one thing to note is that typically when we do disparity or depth map calculations, we typically have two images, the left and right one. So from there, we could know that if we have a pixel on the left image and a pixel on the right image, the disparity is the distance between the two pixels, which we call delta here. In our case, a lot of our models are actually monocular, so we actually only use a single image, but we assume that if we were to have a second camera view, where would that location of the other pixel be located? And the depth is calculated using similar triangles based off of the focal length and the baseline. And this depth is what will tell you the actual distance or the z value of your point in the real world. So when we look at the accuracy of the depth model, what we want to consider is which data set they're actually testing it against. Because a lot of times, people have a lot of different applications. So if you see one method is good, you really have to pay attention to what type of data set they were evaluating their model based off of. So here are some of the common ones that you typically will see. So we have the NYU, which is based off of a bunch of video sequences for indoor scenes. We also have the DIO, which is dense indoor and outdoor depth. We have the ETH3D, which is a multi-view stereo benchmark. It has a bunch of variety of indoor and outdoor. We also have the Middlebury, which is a classic stereo uh, data set. And we also have the Kitty, which is very good for uh, self-driving type applications. So first model we want to take a look at is the Depth Anything V2. So what you notice is that this is very good for fine details. It's also pretty good with translucent or transparent surfaces. And also, with reflective surfaces, it does a pretty good job. You can see right here on the GitHub, we have the small, base, large, and giant model that's coming up soon. If we go to Hugging Face, we see that the small model right here is going to be about 99 megabytes. We have the base model, which is about 390. And we also have the large one, which is going to be 1.3 gigabytes. They also have some code here, which can let you reproduce some of the training results. Now, up next is our Depth Crafter. One thing that really sets Depth Crafter apart from the other models like Depth Anything V2 is that, for example, if you look at these videos here, what you're going to notice is that the consistency of the depth across the different frames is very robust. So if you notice that if you're looking at the Depth Anything V2, it tends to flicker a lot. But if you're looking at the Depth Crafter, the consistency from frame to frame is a very smooth and gradual change, which is what you want. Because what ends up happening is if you do it for video applications and it's flickering, then it's going to be very unstable and the depth calculation is going to jump between different frames. So if you come over to Hugging Face, you could go ahead and get their model. Their model size is 3 gigabytes. And here you can see that in terms of their training code, they currently don't have any available open to the public. So next up is Depth Pro from Apple. So they focus on calculating the actual depth directly instead of the other models where they get the disparity first. And they can also figure out the focal length. But one of the main things that they focus on for a lot of their examples is that they can get a lot of fine details, especially at the boundary. So you can see here there's some examples with the cat and the rabbit. But you can see that the details at the boundary is very crisp. And you can see it gets each strand of hair uh, very clearly. So you can see they also have their model in Hugging Face at 1.9 gigabytes. And currently, they don't support any sort of training code. Next up is Marigold. So they have some examples here where they take their images, get their depth map, and create 3D models. But one of the things is that you can see their models are relatively light. They're at around 167 to 300 megabytes. And you can see here that they actually provide training codes. So if you actually have some custom data set you want to optimize for, then this may be a good option. So next up is Metric 3D. And as the name suggests, it tries to focus on getting the actual metric values of their depth calculation. And you can see this could be very useful if you're trying to measure houses, for example. 
So here you can see in Hugging Face, they have their models at their lightest one being 150 megabytes, and their biggest one is at 1.65 gigabytes. And for training, they actually provide some training code. So this could be a good option if you want to train it for your own custom data set. So next up is the DPT model from Intel. So a lot of times you're going to hear it by the name of Midas. But here you can see these are some examples with their large and hybrid models. For their large model on Hugging Face, you can see it's up at around 1.37 gigabytes. And their hybrid Midas is at around 498 megabytes. Currently, there isn't any official code that supports training, but there are some people that have attempted to support that with their own code. OK, so here's a table summarizing all the different models based off of the specialty, speed size, training, and license. But with a specialty, go ahead and choose the one that's going to be best for your application. With the speed and size, I just told you the model size, because depending on which hardware you use, you're going to have different speed. So choose the one that's best suitable for your hardware. And training, a lot of times, if the off-the-shelf one model doesn't work for you and you need to fine-tune it, that's going to be a very important factor you look at. And with the license, you know, if you have a commercial or non-commercial route that you're going down, then this will be a very important thing for you. So after reviewing all of these models, here are some of my recommendations for you. If you want to train on your custom data set, go ahead and use things like the Depth Anything V2, Marigold, Metric 3D, and the DPT, aka Midas. If you want to have fast inference on basic hardware, then you might want to go with the Depth Anything V2, Marigold, or DPT. If you want to have good depth estimation on reflective or transparent translucent surfaces, you probably want to go with Depth Anything V2. If you want to have good estimation on videos, then you probably want to go with Depth Crafter. If you want good metric depth estimation and also have good hardware, then use Depth Pro. If you want less restrictive licensing, then you might want to consider Depth Anything V2, Marigold, Metric 3D, or DPT. Lastly, I would say my overall pick for depth estimation in general would be the Depth Anything V2. But of course, it all comes down to what data set you're working with. So go ahead and test out the models that you think will work best for you and see which one gives you the best results. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.